for the no, class? I, I put a lot of effort before the class. Uh, I try not to use any notes in the classroom because if I need the notes, it means my logic is not solid. If my logic is solid, every sentence I say will automatically lead to the next one. If it doesn't, there's a fault in your thinking. So I, I usually will not get stuck in the lecture because I'm having a stream of reasoning. So you first get that in your head. What's the starting point? What follows logically and what follows after that? I have to figure that out. Then I have to go to class. And of course, once in a while, I may forget to get in trouble. It is still better to face your audience and try to think in real time, even if you screw up, than to write everything down and in your hand and then writing on the blackboard. So this was a part two of the interview and we will move towards the part three of the interview where we will uh, kind of know about the personal life of Dr. Ashankar. We will eventually ask some personal questions. So let's see how that goes. And uh, we will talk about, yes, we will talk about uh, Professor Rajaraman. And here we start part three. So are you ready, sir? Anji, tayar hai. <laughs> gee, sir, gee, sir. So, you were born in Delhi, right? Yes. Uh -huh. where, where, where were you born? And uh, Bengali market. Bengali. Okay. So, in 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 South Delhi part, like. Uh, that I don't know. I thought everyone knows Bengali market, no? Uh, See, it's yeah. not far from India Gate. Okay. Not far okay. from India Gate. Okay. Okay. Now I, I I got tick 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 tick. So okay okay okay. So, uh, you have an elder brother, and I have met him, and it was quite a nice experience. Uh, I met him at the time of Christmas. So, he was like working with the scientists. Uh, like he was uh. He was in touch with uh, Dyson, sir, and he was touch in touch with Feynman, sir. So, how was your bond with him, uh, like, help you in physics? You have told us earlier, but can you tell us something more about uh, your and his relationship so that people might know about uh, him? So, you see, my family had six boys. And Radha Raman was the oldest. And he went to St. Stephen on a scholarship when I was maybe nine or 10. So after that, we never lived in the same house. The scholarship paid for his room and board in Stephen's. So he went there. Then um, I went to Bangkok with my father, who got posted in the UN. And then he went to America. So during those years, uh, our contact was very minimal. So finally, uh, when I was in, just about entered IIT, the year before that, he came back for the first time. And we were pretty much like strangers. I mean, uh, we had emotional attachment, but we didn't know what to even tell each other, right? I grew up in Madras and, and Delhi, and he was in the US, and we didn't know what to talk about. So sometimes he would start talking about physics. But that's something like the satellite issue. Then he said, uh, that's when I told you, he liked my answer, said, I think you will be good in physics. So why don't I send you some booklets uh, when I stop in England on the way to the US and what college is in England. Maybe you can go there. Because in India, they said, if you want to do physics, you got to go back to first year. But I already knew a lot of undergraduate physics, but it was not allowed. In India, you have to start everything from the beginning. So he said, but if you go to England, you can start where you want at your level. But that didn't work out. Uh, then he would come every few years to India, Nigeria, where I was with my parents. Uh, then we started having a real bond. And we were the only two people at the time who were really interested in physics. I had two other brothers who did physics, but one went into business and one went to the IAS. But Raja Raman and I are the true disciples of physics. So we would talk a lot about physics. And then uh, 
Later on, I became his colleague because I went to graduate school and I could understand exactly what he was doing because it's the same physics. And sometimes when I was in Berkeley, he would visit as a visiting prof and spend a semester there. I talked to him a lot more. And it's fun to have a brother who is in the same universe that you are in. We know all the heroes, we know all the villains, we know all the characters. So we can do the physics gossip with each other that we cannot do with other siblings. So that we did a lot. Uh, and we sometimes will talk physics. And I'm always afraid to talk physics with him because he will set a trap. You will say, you're all big American scientists, you know, I'll ask you some trivial question that I already know he's setting a trap. Usually, I could not answer the trivial questions. I tell him, look, no more trivial questions. I cannot answer. But he forced me to think about what I was saying. And I couldn't uh, push anything, slip anything past him. So uh, he was like a, he was like a filter whenever we talked. And then he was, he had gone back to India, like I said, and it was fairly difficult to work from India only because there's a delay. The journals came there late. We wrote a reply to some article, it went three months to somebody. And people in the West assumed that nobody in India knew very much, so they would take their own time answering, or they'd be dismissive. He had to overcome all that. But every few years, he will come to the US for a few months. And during those few months, he would somehow find out the latest problem in the field and make an impact and then go back. So he was managing to stay up to date, even though he had all this uh, remote separation. So I would, I would enjoy talking physics and uh, physics politics and family, family stories. He knew the life of my parents in the early days, which I did not know. So he would sometimes tell me that. And uh, he's a somewhat private person, but I managed to penetrate him and we can, I can laugh with him and about him and it's quite okay. Uh, other people, even in my family, may not always do that, but he is open to being uh, kidded with. And he's also like, uh, he also like to crack jokes while teaching. Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He likes we, we have a lot of uh, jokes, which are not traditional jokes, like uh, two people went into a bar, not that kind of joke. Situational humor, where the minute you describe the situation, you already start laughing, but you can see it's a funny situation. So we do that. So it's an it's a all-in-one uh, brother, companion, mentor, all-in-one. So was it uh, like when there are two people talking physics or talking something of their own field? I won't say physics, but something of their own fields. Uh, there are two people in the family who are talking like this. And people in the family get somewhat, after some time, they get irritated. Ki, Bhai, bas ab, kitna tumko discuss karna hai. <laughs> to, no, kit- they, excellent. We would not talk physics with other people non-physics members in the family. That was enough no, time. Not with them, but in so front of them. You're... Other, even with each other. We will try to include everybody. There is enough time to talk okay. Okay. okay, 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 okay. So, okay, so I, I'll... Raja Raman sir, we have known a lot about Raja Raman sir. And now, when I was interviewed with him, I didn't know what to do. कि ऐसी चीज भी होगी कि मतलब ऐसे एकदम से कनेक्शन निकलेगा मैं जब उनके साथ बात करी थी तो उन्होंने मेरे को ये बताया था कि he was trying like uh, once he finished his uh, like he came from America and he was trying to become an IAS officer he was trying to go there in that field but someone told him that you are doing good in science so please there are a lot of people already there doing these things like civil services and politics so you must do what you are doing so was there any uh, discussion with you in later part with uh, like i was doing this and this these kind of things happen 
No, I didn't know that what you're telling me is news to me. I thought he just went into physics from day one. I did not know that he was contemplating any other career. So you have told me something. I did not know. <laughs> he didn't tell you that he was going to become an IAS or... Well, uh, everybody tried to be an IAS officer. I told you another brother who went to St. Stephen's, got his MSc in physics. He then joined the IAS. Mm-hmm. So another brother, the youngest brother, he went to Stephen's, got his degree, then went into MBA. So there are three brothers who went to Stephen's? Yes. yes. Was there like a discount over the fee? Or <laughs> no, 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 nothing, nothing. We just <laughs> went there because uh, we were following the lead of our oldest, oldest brother. <laughs> yeah. Nice, 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 nice. <laughs> say, say, say. So... Uh, let's come to some personal questions. Ki, what are your like? Uh, you have told that you are empty, so you have taken a paper and a question solved. Kar li. So when you are not doing all those things, what do you do when you are not doing science? I am watching. I am reading novels. <clears throat> uh, what kind of novels you are in? Anything. Uh, mystery. Historical novels. Uh, the more fr- frivolous it is, the more I find it interesting because I'm trying to get away from my physics life. So what I read has very little to do with science. Then I watch uh, a lot of stuff on TV and I spend a lot of time with my kids and grandchildren. That's the next, the next best thing. And I talk very often to my old student, Murthy, who was my first and only graduate student. I only took one graduate student in 42 years, and he has my, been my constant collaborator. So I like, uh, I talk to him about personal things and professional things, because it's another example where we know the physics and we know the sociology and politics of physics, which is, as you know, very interesting to people in any profession to gossip over other people in the field. So he's another young person I talk to, but my kids as they grow up are my friends now, because you can talk to them as an adult. Yes. Okay. I, I sorry, I interrupted you in the novel part. So uh, you were saying that uh, apart from novel, also you do some 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 other activities also. Uh, I like to walk a lot, and, and I go to Aspen every year. I'm going in next week. That you can hike, you can interact with other businesses. Uh, okay. So. Apart from uh, Raja Raman, sir, who were your ideals uh, whom you have followed in physics, like in your initial days? Uh, I don't think I followed any individual or as a role model for my behavior, but there are some people whose science I admired a lot. Uh, there are two people I worked with or talked to a lot. One is uh, Ken Wilson. To me, he is the ultimate example of absolutely stupendous scientist. And I learned about his work and I followed his work. I talked to him a few times. And my last book is one of the people dedicated to his Wilson. The other person I like talking to a lot, at least in the younger days, is Witten. Uh, Witten is an all-rounder, but mainly string theorist. And I like the way he thinks and like the way he writes. Most, uh, most people in the West are not very good at explaining what they do. They just get on with the job, they do their thing, but, but they're not good pedagogues. But Whitman writes beautifully, and I like uh, the way he writes. And if I want to learn a subject that he has worked on, I will read his papers first. So, Ed Whitman, sir? Yes. Okay. Then I'm also friendly with all the young Indian physicists, you know, like Subir Sachdev, who used to be here, is now at Harvard, and Central. Uh, who's at MIT, Ashwin Vishwanath, who's at Harvard. Uh, and in India, my old buddies were like Spenta Vadia, they were my friends. But I have not been in touch with them. Uh, you know, I had a connection with IIT Madras for about six years, where I was, went as a visiting prof every December. First, I didn't want to take that assignment because I said, uh, what am I going to do there? But I'm so glad I did. It was wonderful to go back to my old haunt, to my old college. 
walk around the same campus, then talk to younger people. Okay, so, uh, do you uh, miss some food or some something uh, which is at your, like, you were born in Delhi and you were... Uh, and you have been in madras also so uh, are there any food things which you hey sab cheez milta hai but waisa nahi milta but waisa milta nahi hoga na jaisa yahan par milta hai it is true that the street food you cannot manage anywhere only in india you get real street food, like golga pa in the street whereas here if you go it's sanitized version in a plate that you cannot get unless you go there so when i go to india i try street food on my last day i said whatever happens i will come here and deal with it <laughs> on the last day then why on last day okay let me ask you this <laughs> why on last day what's that uh, why do you try things on last day oh because if, if i have a stomach problem i'll be home before it sets in then i'll be in the us and i can deal with it but i don't want to have the problem in the middle of my indian trip so in the beginning i avoid that ji ji okay so whenever you come to india uh, are there any fixed meetings with raja raman sir and uh, how are these meetings nowadays right with him or what did he say when when press most of the time to chennai so sometimes i would meet him uh, but not on every trip because i started going every year he's in delhi so yeah so when i may not go there on every indian trip depends on my flight and so on but sometimes i can meet him in the us to have done that so varies ji 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 okay are you interested in movies yes what what kind of movies you are interested in well you know netflix has been my downfall there are movies unlimited number of movies so i like historical movies a lot i like comedies a lot i don't like action movies too much uh, i don't like a movie that relies entirely on technical tricks i will trade that any day for a movie with a good plot i like a movie where at all times i know what's going on so i don't like movies that go back and forth in time then i got to go home and do a 10 page calculation to find out what happened i want to enjoy, <laughs> enjoy <it. laughs> okay 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 nice nice okay so uh aap jab matlab india mein kabhi uh kisi student se mile ho kabhi uh yahan par kuch conferences जब जब भी कोई कॉन्फ्रेंसेस होती हैं, व्हाट आर द मोस्ट आस्ड क्वेश्चंस कि क्या सब लोग क्या ज्यादा पूछते हैं कि सर क्या कुछ पीपल राइट टू मी अ लॉट सेइंग आई एम एन इंजीनियर हु वांट्स टू गो इनटू फिजिक्स एंड दे से वी लुक्ड एट योर वेबसाइट यू नो यू यूज्ड टू बी एन इंजीनियर एंड नाउ वी आर फिजिक्स हाउ डू यू डू दैट आई गेट दैट क्वेश्चन अ लॉट सो आई हैव इन माय कंप्यूटर आई हैव वन पेज रेसिपी फॉर हाउ टू डू दैट but it may not be good anymore uh, this is from my time where you took the gre and so on to prove to the universities you're good but now more and more people are discounting the gre they don't even want to hear it so i don't know how a student can prove he or she is very good but i at least tell them intellectually what subjects you have to learn to go into physics see so a lot of people well, are that's all they ask most people do. otherwise they ask technical questions connected to the lecture but people who write to me tell me they want to go into physics and they are not in physics they want to know how to do it okay so uh, in the previous part you said that you are someone who like enjoy music and who like aapko acha lagta hai sunna you enjoy it and तो किस तरीके का म्यूजिक आपको सुनना पसंद है और क्या कुछ आप एक म्यूजिक में देखते हो कि ये चीज होगी तो सुनने में और ज्यादा मजा आएगा नहीं नहीं सब कुछ सब कुछ पसंद है कराटिक म्यूजिक हिंदी फिल्म सॉन्ग्स हिंदी सम क्लासिकल 
music. And in, in the American thing, I like folk music. And I like uh, not very much of pop music. I used to hear a lot of classical music in my younger days. All the symphonies I used to enjoy. And my kids all play classical music, so I got more interested in listening to that. But you know, nowadays, no one sits in a dark room and listens to a whole symphony for 45 minutes. That does not happen. We are in front of some screen where we don't see anything for more than five minutes, or 10 at the most. So I, I miss that part of concentrated reading and concentrated listening. But the thing has had taken a toll on everybody's ability to be focused. And when I drive, I got my phone that tells me where to go. I don't know where anything is. I don't know the phone number of my kids because I can speed dial them. A lot of things I used to remember, I don't remember. So I think that's causing a decline in cognition. See, 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 see. What, what are your favorite songs? I, think? I cannot think of a particular song. Many, many songs. You know what I'm listening to? A few to of now? them. Uh -huh. I'll tell you. Uh, song I've been hearing is Jane Wo Kaise. So, listen, I have it here. I'll show you one second. Hold on. So, I have with me that song and the translation. So, I, I have heard the song from the time I was a little kid. Uh, but somehow, in my mature years, that song had a big resonance with me. And I said, I have to know what all the words mean. So I better know websites that tell you what the, any song means, the lyrics and the meaning. So that's a song I hear all the time. And I, when I like a song, I hear it by many, many people. But each version is different. Each interpretation is different. So I hear that. Mm -hmm. yeah, similar, I, I like the... Uh, Western music and country music, but I've been hearing a lot of this music now. So when in YouTube, once you go down one road, you keep going further and further into that. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I find I find that these songs were written with so much more care and scholarship than the actors who were acting them. When you see the video clips, the actors and actresses look ridiculous. The songs are really deep and meaningful, even now. Uh, they are very appropriate in the situation. The language is beautiful. The sentiments that are expressed are very deep. But that doesn't go with the acting. As a young person, I accepted that as good acting, but now I don't. Okay, so I have something which is like I have some memories connected with the song. Mm -hmm. I yes. have. Uh, something like ye gana bajega, tum to mere ko waisa wala feel hoga. then yeah. when I was in uh, when I was preparing for some exam and I used to listen to that thing does that happen to you also uh, like sure it's a universal phenomenon that the music so, takes you back in time more effectively than anything else you just have to hear a piece of a song that will transport you back to that period when you're listening to it all the time for example when I hear Mughal -e Azam songs I go back to my first two years in IIT. That's what was playing all the time. Yeah, it takes you back. Also, uh, I told you I went to Bangkok for some time and I was living abroad in the summer with my parents. So a lot of Western songs, like Elvis Presley songs, they take me to a certain period in time when I hear it. There's absolutely nothing like music to take you back. Nice. Elvis Presley song. Yeah, look, we, are very, we should be very grateful for the artists. You know, we all do our physics and we do our talk, but the people who bring real happiness to other people are the musicians and the actors, the writers. Uh, okay, one one question that uh, uh, that many people would like to know: okay? How was the boys' hostel then? In like, I, yeah, well, I went there some years back. I could not believe I could fit into that. Room. Now, there are two kids living in the same room, at least in Chennai. That's how it is, very tightly packed. Uh, they have done a lot to change it now. But we are used to the times we live in, and we don't question things. When you are going up in India, you don't 
question the heat, you accept that. Sometimes there are bugs, you accept that. Sometimes there are bad toilets, you accept that. And then when you go back, you have some problems. But as time changes continuously, you get used to the life you're living. Right? So when I looked at the hostel, uh, I was surprised I could live in such a tiny room. But when my memories come, the memory is not about the shape of the room at all. Memory is about the other people populating the room, populating the dining hall, people in the audience when during a debate, or professors in the classroom. That's what you remember. You don't remember the architecture that is. So uh, a lot of uh, boys' hostel things are today, which is like celebrating birthdays in a different way and so a lot of other musti is going on in hostels. I, I, see, was... I didn't know that. See, you have to tell me because I've been out of touch for 50 years at least. <laughs> okay. Do you know about birthday bumps? No. In that, when uh, birthday is birthday, so how many years ka bhi wo hua hai? Like somebody has turned into yeah. turned 23. 23. Punches or kicks you will really? get from <laughs> you will get from his oh, I, I didn't. friends. <laughs> so, <laughs> do, do you know about the, this culture <laughs> culture in boys I, hostel? This is new stuff. I'm glad I don't have to do that at my age. So I won't survive. <laughs> because, but <laughs> there are a lot of anecdotes from boys hostel with so i i just really want to know what was your time was like oh ragging you know? was a big thing i don't know the ragging huh. was big. that was yeah. ragging in my like days. nowadays ragging is not a not like a part because of some many of like okay, so how was uh, how was the ragging part at your time? No, chennai was not so bad my another brother of mine went to iit Karakpur. That was such an isolated island. It's a lawless jungle. And there the ragging was much worse. I had the Madras that lasted about one month, not very serious. And we all traveled as a group from the classroom to the hostel. And we tried to stay inside of the group so that the enemy will not catch us. But they would pick us off and take us away and bother us and send us back a few hours later. But it lasted only a short time. How was the bothering part was? Like, like they used to it's stand true. you up for and to sing a song for you? Whatever or something? they did, it lasted about a month. And the fear of it was more than the actual phenomenon. Did, did you, uh, like, uh, how did, how was you with your juniors after that? Oh, when I when it's my turn to rag people, I didn't do it because I never thought it was very creative or interesting uh, way to show your seniority. How, how did you interacted with your juniors uh, during your? You know, IIT was pretty much uh, you limited most of your interaction to your classmates, and within the classmates, the people in your subdiscipline, and the people who lived in the same hallway in the hostel. Outside of that, uh, I didn't meet many people. Mm -hmm. I met a lot of people as a debater, but it was, it was impersonal. You go to a room full of 500 people, you don't know them, you just talk to them. Nice, nice. By the way, I should add that when I was debating, I was winning a lot of these prizes, but my father, he was sort of proud of me, but he was unhappy that I was spending all my time standing up on a stage and talking to people. He said, no, no, he's from the old world. He said, you should be studying. You should not be doing all these commercial things. But I, I disagreed with that. because I think that's what gave me the confidence to face a group of people and to get a message across in a very short time. When you're debating, you have the clock. You get about five minutes to make your point. That trained me to think about the essence of any message. That is very helpful. And when I'm in physics now, I go to conferences, I go give talks. For many people, giving a talk in front of an audience is very scary. But the crowd bothers them, even though they're very good physicists. But I got over that long back in IIT when I started debating. I lost my fear of the crowd. So that was a very useful thing. I think 
I'm glad that my brother's efforts to uh, send me to England did not work out because I think you should grow up in your own country during those important years. You should feel you are mainstream. Whereas if I'd gone abroad, I would certainly be in the periphery. I would be an outsider. And who wants to be an outsider when you're 18 and 19? You want to be in a place where you think you own the place. This is your place. And once you establish your personality, you can go anywhere you want and your confidence exists already. So I think I got that from the five years I spent as an engineer. So even though it was not that important to my ultimate career, very important to my personality. What do you think uh, that uh, should one, every person who is going to be a teacher or a communicator, communicator is like, it's obvious that they should, but who wants to be a teacher and who wants to uh, like address someone, so they should get a stage experience in their life. You for... Don't you think so? It's, I think so. I mean, it may not happen as easily. But that's what you need. Sometimes you learn on the job. You have not had no, any stage experience. You go to your first classroom, your hands are shaking. But after a while, you do that. But if you've done it before, uh, I couldn't wait to go to my first classroom. Whereas if I never taught before, uh, my first few days will be traumatic, I think, difficult. Okay. Because it's a new aspect. I mean, it's one thing to know your subject, other things to go in front of your people, explain to them. So, sir, uh, if you were not a physicist, let's just just imagine for a some time, some time that you get another chance in your life to become something else. Very quab. No, not what uh, my quab is my dream. Ha, ha. <laughs> uh, you know, I have decided that this is the life for me. Not necessarily in physics, but academic life. Because I don't, I don't think I'd have done well. I may have done well, but I wouldn't have enjoyed any other kind of life. I like to be with students. They keep my mind young. I teach different subjects every year. I learn new things when I teach. And I don't think I'm getting old because I look at my audience. They look the same age every year. So you don't see time passing when you're teaching. And you make a difference because over the years, I've taught people who are now senior professors. Some of them are professors at Yale, who are my students. And that's like our children, our intellectual children are our students. So at the end of the day, you don't say, what have I done with my life? I don't have this existential questions. I think what I've done with no, my life, I had a good I, time with a lot of people. I'm, I'm asking, the, uh, what if I give you a chance that Okay, something you else. Ha, something else from the physics, something else from academia. What would you have chosen? Like, I'm just giving you a yeah, choice. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. What I don't know, maybe writing novels, some kind of writing. I like writing. Uh, I don't know if I would have had it's easy to write a physics book, it's much more difficult to write a novel because you have to have good imagination. But I can imagine that life is a good life. Mm -hmm. Definitely not politics, definitely not civil service. I think the engineering life, I already had a choice. I decided not to take it. So. Okay, so we are at the very end of this podcast. And I don't want to say this now because uh, I don't want to end this podcast, but eventually I have to. Because, yes. <laughs> because both of us... Uh, I have a wish that I would meet you in person and we'll do another podcast and uh, we will talk about a lot of things. I have told I, you everything and more. I don't think anything is left. I have more questions. I have a lot of more questions okay. after talking to you. Okay. All right. Because, <laughs> because your answers may get finished, but my questions are getting yeah. a rise day by day because uh, as I know you more now so I will have more questions in our okay. next meeting All right. so Very whenever good. you are coming to Delhi please let me I will Zaru. Ji, welcome. Yeah.
फिर मिलेंगे सो वन एडवाइस दैट यू वुड लाइक टू गिव टू द स्टूडेंट हु आर वाचिंग दिस नो आई डोंट हैव एनी एडवाइस डिपेंड्स ऑन व्हाट द इशू इज देयर इज नो यूनिवर्सल एडवाइस इफ आई गिव यूनिवर्सल एडवाइस इट विल बी टोटली टू द रिसर्चर्स हु आर हु आर स्टक एट देयर सर्स हु आर स्टक एट सम प्लेस दैट ओके दे वांट टू डू द साइंस बट दे आर नॉट Uh, they are stuck at some place and yeah, they uh, i found out the only time i think i was stuck was during my harvard period when i didn't know what to do then i found something i could do which is to write a book and that is very important to do something instead of doing nothing everybody must be good at something even if it's not mainstream to your work do that and before you realize it uh, you will be back on the saddle doing what you want that's what i would say where to start if you want to write a book oh you must have a topic you like explaining to people that you figured out after a lot of struggle then there's a lot of pleasure in explaining it in the most direct simplest way ji 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 okay so thank you very much sir there are a lot of questions that i want to ask but it's almost been 2 hours and i yes. have taken a lot of time of yours so yeah. I'll, sure. I'll 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 just end this here. I don't want to end, but I have to end this here. So okay. thank you very much for joining, and uh, I hope we will meet soon, and we okay. will do a lot of more discussion on other more topics. बहुत सारी बात चीत और मतलब फिर हम डिस्कस करेंगे कि who is actually your uh, the comedian that you are talking about. and I, we we uh, yes, yes. Uh, we will talk about it i will find minute ago on internet i will find his name tandan i think tandan amit tandan ah okay amit tandan sir tandan, okay. that's right yeah let's say let me tell you one thing uh, a secret yeah i have another youtube channel on which i interview indian stand up comedians yeah i see <laughs> ah Okay. So there, I I I cover their journey also. <laughs> so, oh. Is that what you do full time? You're a full time uh, TV personality, YouTube personality. Not a full time TV personality. Uh, uh, not a full time YouTube personality. I do a job, but uh, this is what I love. When yes. I am not doing my jobs, so this is what I love. Uh-huh. That's why I run, want to write a book. And yeah, yeah. want to document all the things which I have. But you will uh, have enough material. I think you should write a book. Yeah. Don't write a book because you want to write a book. Write a book because you want to share something. Thank you very much, sir, for joining yeah, and my tackling my weird questions for almost yeah, two hours. Very enjoyable. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank Bye-bye. you very much, sir. Bye, sir. Mm-hmm.